well, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll and I are delighted to be here today at Mountain View Farm to be able to make this announcement. We want to begin by thanking Liz Adler, Ben Perot, and everybody at Mountain View Farm. It's good to see people inside actually shopping, supporting our local farms. That's that's really what today is, is all about. But we want to thank them for, for hosting us. We also want to thank Mayor Nicole LaChapelle uh, from the community of, of East Hampton for her presence here today and great to see so many folks from East Hampton. I know we're also going to be joined by Mayor McCabe from Westfield. He's here. He's here. He's here. Okay. Terrific. How are you, Mayor? Nice, um, to, see you. nice to see you too. Um, and we're delighted to be joined not only by our wonderful uh, mayors, the, the partnership our administration has with, with local officials is really, really important to us and we are grateful to them for the work that you do day in and day out as we try to serve the needs of residents around the state. Uh, and we could not do that without the tremendous uh, partners that we have in our legislature. And the people of this region should be incredibly uh, proud and also feel blessed to have the, the legislative leadership that they have. It's reflected in Senator uh, Joe Comerford, who's here, Senator John Velas, who's here, Represented, Representative Natalie Blay, uh, who is here, and also I know we have uh, representatives from Rep. Perry's office. He wanted to be here, uh, but was not able to. So that's just um, important for everybody to know because everything we do is in partnership, local, state, and federal. To that end, we're also delighted to have representatives from Senator Markey and Senator Warren's office here as well. I'm delighted to be joined by the Lieutenant Governor, who you'll hear from shortly, as well as our Secretary of Energy and Environmental Affairs, Rebecca Tepper, our Commissioner of Agricultural Resources, uh, and one of uh, Western Mass's own, uh, also hailing from a, a proud farming family, Ashley Randall. Our Director of Rural Affairs, remember our administration created this position, first time, never existed before. Rural Affairs, super important for our 181 rural communities across Massachusetts, an important economic engine, it's something we want to support. And our Director, we're proud uh, to have with us, is Ann Gobi. Um, <laughs> We, uh, we are also delighted to be joined by uh, representatives from our office um, and our Western Mass office. This is also a commitment. We've doubled the commitment in Western Mass. We're delighted to be joined by our director, Kristen Aleko, and our deputy director, Lamar Cook. Thank you for being here today. And speaking of partnership, um, I just want to say uh, how grateful I am to United Way, and specifically United Way of Central Mass, um, its CEO and President, Tim Garvin, as well as United Way leaders who have joined us from all around the state uh, for this, this effort, including from Berkshire, Hampshire, Hampshire, and Franklin counties. And also, um, we're delighted to be joined in partnership on this by the Community Foundation of Western Massachusetts. And we're here shortly, we will hear shortly from its president and CEO, Megan Burke. Um, and finally, keeping us all in order and, and on task, uh, where is he? Our fabulous district attorney, Dave Sullivan, you know, who, <laughs> um, you know, who, uh, who understands the importance of, of food security and also supporting our, our local farmers. So, uh, folks, I'm going to turn it over to the Lieutenant Governor, but basically the, the upshot is this. We've had severe weather. It's not surprising given what we've seen across the country and across uh, the world when it comes to, to, to climate. And with these serious weather events and ever-changing weather events come real consequences. And unfortunately, most unfortunately, those consequences were felt in very real ways over the last 11 days by folks in western Massachusetts and central Massachusetts. The flooding resulted in tremendous devastation. Devastation to farms, devastation to the crops, devastation to, to personnel and employees and payroll, devastation to infrastructure. And coming at a time on the cusp of harvest for many, it really wipes out the ability to have a second season and to and really presents we know real questions about what's going to happen even next year given potential uh, impact on on the fields and over the last several days our team um, including the lieutenant governor and myself have had an opportunity 
to visit farms with uh, um, others who are represented here, including our, our electeds, and uh, to see the devastation firsthand, you know, we knew we had to do something. And so that's what today is about. We wanted to find a way to come together, provide direct aid to our farmers. Uh, we've got to take the care of those who take care of so many. Um, and we've got to also recognize that there are implications for our farmers um, that are big time that we're going to work to resolve and also for our food banks, food pantries, and the important food security network and infrastructure that exists across the state. So we're going to try to work hard on all of these fronts. Um, the Lieutenant Governor is here to tell you a little bit more about it and I just want to uh, say thank you to her for her leadership, her commitment. Um, this has always been about listening to people. We started the morning in, in Lancaster uh, meeting with, with farmers there, mostly immigrant farmers um, who, are, who are feeding communities and families. And, um, and we're uh, finishing up here today with this announcement, which is about how can we as a team, as an administration, work in partnership to provide direct relief to people who are hit really, really hard. Um, I also want to say we recognize that this is a now, right now, in what we're trying to do. But to the farmers, I want you to know we're in it for the long haul. So this is more than about just relief, uh, which we're going to pursue, state, local, federal. But it's about recovery, it's about resilience, it's about sustainability. We have many multi-generations here represented in our farming community. And we want to make sure that the next generation is able to continue on in something that has been such an important fabric of who we are as community, who we are as a state. So to talk more about Team Massachusetts is our fabulous uh, Lieutenant Governor, Kim Driscoll. for not only the introduction, but the partnerships she's provided to me, to our communities. We're so grateful to be able to work together to make sure our communities are strong. And a big part of why we're here today are about having not only strong communities, but the community partners and farms and farm owners and growers and the families and the traditions that have been part of the farming community are a big part of that. Uh, for the last week and a half, the governor's been out, I've been out. We've had direct conversations with our growers, with our farm community about what their needs are. Um, it is heartbreaking. Today is actually the first day I think the sun's been shining at such a, such a magnitude and we've seen people in fields that aren't moving water out of the way. And so it's, it's with gratitude that we're here talking about the ways we can work together. And speaking with some of the farmers, you know, so real, so consistent, and not wanting help, but just wanting folks to know what's happening, but needing help. Talking about the only industry that buys things retail and sells them wholesale, right? About farmers who've been doing this for generations, families coming together to take on really fertile soil and you know, just taking anything that's been thrown out of them. Our farmers are meteorologists, checking the weather, always knowing what's going on, probably knowing it better than some of our own meteorologists. Uh, they're scientists. Uh, we heard about photosynthesis and phytophia and fighting, you know, fighting these, these, uh, these, these, uh, these potential contaminants that can really hurt what's going on. But mostly I think they're about public service because what they do, growing food, not just for their families, but for all of us, is the sustenance that provides for strong communities. And when they are doing well, we are doing well. And when our farmers are hurting and challenged, we are hurting and challenged. And that's what today is about, coming together, community leaders, local private sector, philanthropy, community engagement, to form the Massachusetts Farm Resiliency Fund. <laughs> You know, as soon as folks heard about the devastation, they were calling Commissioner Randall, reaching out, wanting to make sure there were ways that they could help. And we wanted to put that action, that activity, that force multiplier to work. Uh, that's why we partnered up with a number of you who are here and others who have stepped up to make donations. And we're hoping that people in the community will see this as a real opportunity to give back in a way to the farming communities, the folks who are growing our food, that sustenance we rely on, and put, up, put Massachusetts in a position to make sure our farms can continue doing the work that they do uh, when we met on Monday, Monday with the farming communities um, in Deerfield, what we heard from farmers is we just want to work. We just want to grow food. And the timing of this weather, the impacts it had on harvest is heartbreaking. Well, here's a way that we can come together to help. And it's our farmers today in Western and Central Mass, but it could be our cranberry growers uh, down the South Coast. Uh, frankly, our fishermen, our, our folks who are fishing on the coast, these weather impacts are happening more and more, and we need to find ways to step up and help. And this fund has been created so we can put farmers first, so we can keep it simple, 
And so there can be a sense of urgency. Farmers are talking about today, am I going to keep people employed? Am I going to be able to pay back my loans? All the money that goes out in the spring for the seed, the supply, the labor that goes into toiling, and then not being able to sell that product. It really is heartbreaking. And that's what this Massachusetts Farm Resiliency Fund is about. We know we're working as a collective at the state level with legislators and amazing work on legislators. Every tour we've been on has had uh, representatives and, and members of the, of the Senate here with us alongside the commissioners and administration officials. This is an opportunity for us all to come together, but this is also about what you can do. Those of us who may not live in Western Mass or Central Mass, uh, ways that you can donate to this fund to help the things that we all rely on. We're all going to be going to our grocery store and picking up something. Um, that was grown. We want it to be grown locally. And the way we're going to ensure that is by making sure we're making the investments in a true team effort, Team Massachusetts coming together to support the Massachusetts Farm Resiliency Fund. We've got great partners helping us administer this in the United Way. I'd like to invite Tim Garvin up to talk a little bit about how this fund will work, where you can go to contribute to it, and how you can make a difference, not just in the communities that were impacted, but frankly, communities across Massachusetts. So it's, it's really odd to wake up in the morning and see a headline that's so devastating to this region and yet be excited about that because it brings this story to our entire state and in fact our entire region. I love America, but I especially love the Commonwealth. And this effort, I wish the entire state could see all of you, elected officials from our federal, from our state, from our local, our mayors, our commissioners. I wish the entire state could see what I'm seeing right now because they would know the value and the importance of partnership. This is everybody coming together saying, we want to offer help and we want to offer hope. We want to make this as simple as possible. And we are going to work on that. We're going to create a regional advisory committee so that we can take care of this region. If and when it happens in other regions, we will do the same thing in Central Mass, on the shore, down on the South Coast, so that we are staying local and helping where the need is greatest. Really what we want to have happen is we want everybody to say, I can do something. Because what's happened today for our farmers affects all of us. I think of four groups. It's our farmers, their families, their employees, their livelihood. It's the crops that we eat. And we aren't talking about feed crops, some feed crops. But we're talking about when you finish here, go in and see Ben's store. You might not be a CSA member, become a CSA member today and buy the store out. <laughs> Buy the store out. It's the stuff I will be eating tonight at my dinner table that you will be eating. It's what nourishes us. The third, Governor, Lieutenant Governor, I am so thrilled that you mentioned this is also part of our food security work. So many of our families and our children, so many of our veterans and our seniors, and I see my good friend Andrew Morehouse is here. They are nourished. Their food security is guaranteed because of our local farms. And finally, it's the economy. It's the economy of the entire state, but especially this region. What happened today, the numbers, the early numbers, Commissioner Randall, if I have this correctly, 75 farms, 2,000 acres, $15 million initially estimates of damage. That affects every single one of us. So what can we do? Support this fund. Say yes. Say yes and then broadcast it to your entire network. Use your social media. Take your cell phone out as soon as you're finished make a $50, $100, $500 donation in front of this farm stand and say, I feel great. I just gave to the Massachusetts Farm Resiliency Fund and I'm asking all of you to join us. I want to end with this. I want to end with a thank you, not just to everybody who's here and not just to everybody who's going to donate. I want to thank our farmers. During the last three and a half years of COVID, we all were able to quarantine. We were able to stay home. We were able to work remotely because we had good proper, nutritious, tasty food that was grown here. And I'm not sure we've said thank you enough to our farmers. Today it's our chance to stand with and for our farmers and to say we thank you and we are here to support you as you have supported us. We thank all of you. Governor, who do I turn it over? Commissioner. Commissioner Randall, come on up. sincere thank you to Ben and Liz for hosting us today. I know it's been an incredibly heartbreaking week for many of our farmers across this region as well as in Central Mass. Who are our farmers here today? Please raise your hand. Thank you for all that you do. It's been an extremely tough year for 
Massachusetts farmers, we had the February 4th freeze, the May 18th frost, and now the trifecta with the flood last week. And I know that it's harder than ever to be a farmer and your backs are up against the wall, but I can say that I feel so honored and so optimistic because we have Governor Healy, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, Secretary Tepper, and an administration that is really committed to our farming community. And today is a show of that commitment. Tim and the United Way of Central Mass, I can't thank Tim enough for being willing to, to run with this crazy idea we had earlier this week and how quickly it all came together with all of the community partners coming together, our legislators, it truly is a partnership and it's about community. All of us are consumers here and we depend upon our farmers and the local food system. And when the local food system becomes as vulnerable as it does due to climate change, this is our opportunity to step up and come together and be more resilient going forward. And the Massachusetts Farm Resiliency Fund is meant exactly to do that, to help farmers now in their time of need but thinking long term how we can be prepared for more events like this and hopefully not as often but we know that the climate is changing and this is one way to help our farming community in their time of need. I will just end by saying that it has been incredibly heartbreaking to meet with all the farmers and see the impacts but today is about hope and moving forward and I think there's a lot of hope and good things to come from this. And thank you to all of the members of the community, the administration, for their support of our local farmers. Thank you. And now I will introduce Megan Burke, who is the CEO of the Community Foundation of Western Massachusetts. Thanks very much. It's so great to see everyone turning out in our community for such an important cause. Um, I really do want to express my gratitude for all of our partners statewide, especially the leadership of the governor and everyone here locally. You've seen something happening in Western Mass and you've come forward to help us move this forward and bring everybody on board from across the state. As has already been mentioned, the farming community is a vital part of the Western Mass economy. It's made up of family farms that have stewarded the rich soil of the Connecticut River Valley, in some cases for over 100 years, and by our indigenous communities for many generations. In recent years, that community has flourished and diversified, connecting farmers to the food processing industry, introducing urban, urban farming and cooperatives, and welcoming new arrivals who bring energy and expertise from our homeland, from their homelands. Collectively, these efforts that are happening in Western Mass are putting food on our plates here and throughout the Commonwealth. And that's why this really is an issue that impacts everybody throughout the state of Massachusetts. As the community foundation serving Western Massachusetts, we're committed to supporting the Massachusetts Farm Resiliency Fund. We seek to ensure that this coordinated effort provides immediately, immediate relief that works for farmers. We want this to work for farmers. And we also want to make sure that it addresses the long-term food security and climate cha change challenges that many have mentioned, but that particularly impact vulnerable residents, whether it's food security issues or climate change. We're also firmly dedicated to assisting donors, generous residents of Western Mass, neighbors helping neighbors, for their efforts to support the well-being of our local farming community, those who want to protect the essence of our agricultural heritage and who have already shared with us their desire to ensure the prosperity of our local food systems. As a hub for philanthropy locally, believe me when I tell you, we have gotten emails, phone calls already saying, how can we help? People know this is serious and they are stepping up. And I'm so pleased that we'll be able to work with Tim Garvin and the United Way to channel those efforts in a coordinated effort that works for everybody. We want one-stop shop where farmers can access the support they need quickly. And I will also say as part of the Community Foundation Network of Massachusetts, through the Community Foundation of Western Mass, we will be able to leverage philanthropic support from throughout the Massachusetts Commonwealth and work with Tim regionally here in Western Mass 
to make sure local knowledge of who most needs the support is at the forefront of making those decisions about where that support goes. So thanks everybody for coming. I'll keep it short. I'm sure we're on a tight schedule. Happy to talk with folks later if there are questions. Um, thanks, Megan, and, and thanks to all we heard from. Um, happy to take questions on topic. Governor, is this fund seeded with any amount of dollars, and, and where exactly is it uh, I can't get you the, the exact amounts right now. Know that we have had commitments, um, and that's great. And, you know, my message... You'll let me know what I can commit to publicly. It's almost $100,000 so that, far. That is yeah. Private philanthropy. We talked to the Attorney General's office. They're committing some funds. Um, you know, at the Big E, uh, they've, they've committed to match the first 10 grand that's been put in. And, you know, I want to be really clear with folks. Um, we are here today in East Hampton. We are here in Western Massachusetts. This has had a disproportionate adverse impact on farmers in Western Massachusetts and Central Massachusetts. But to be clear with the people of Massachusetts, this is an issue that all 351 cities and towns own. We have to see that in this experience, so much else is implicated and disrupted, particularly around food security, but also around economic development. And we do not need our farmers who provide so much and are such an important cog in our infrastructure to, you know, to, to, to go away, to disappear as a result of the severe financial distress that they're under. So my message to the people of Massachusetts, including those in the East, please go to this fund. United Way Central Mass, uh, the Farm Fund, Easy Way, push of a button to contribute. These farmers need the money now. We cannot wait for federal funding, which we will pursue. We will pursue state funding. But right now, everybody in Massachusetts has a chance to step up, to be part of the team, and support men and women who for generations, some of them, have been out there working hard, getting after it, to deliver for families across this state. So an easy way to contribute, United Way, Central Mass, Farm Fund. I ask people to go online today. I also ask for people's support in spreading the message around the region, across the state, across the state. Um, and let's show what Massachusetts is really made of. What, uh, what would distribution look like? And is there any criteria that farms have to meet to be eligible for these funds? Well, you know, we're interested in getting this money out as quickly as possible. And we'd like as much money coming in to the fund so that more can be going out. We will make sure that it is carefully allocated. We know, for example, there are over 75 farms affected. They have a range of losses, but you know they go from the tens of thousands to the hundreds of thousands. Say nothing of loans that are coming due right now. And so the impact is great. Uh, we want to make sure that, that we have a, an equitable distribution. Um, and I know that these men and women will put it to, to great use right away. Uh, grants or loans, Governor? Not loans, grants. I mean, I think the, the one thing we understand, there's a place for loans. And if we can help you and look to, to help refinance some of the loans that you have now, we're all going to work to do that and we'll explore that. But I want to be clear, this is money out the door. This is These are grants because that's what farmers need. They need money out, and that's my message to people. We need the money in the fund now because this was in talking this was the most direct and quickest way to get relief to people who need it to deal with infrastructure to deal with cleanup to make payroll uh, to source food from other places because they're going to lose their customers if they don't find ways to to make good on some of that to pay loans and so direct relief money out the door it'll be carefully watched with united way i know our uh, Mass Department of Agricultural Resources will continue uh, involvement here and we'll all work together as a team to make sure this is done as quickly, as effectively as possible and with the help of the people of Massachusetts as generously as possible. Speaking of loans, could a, the USDA secretarial, uh, USDA disaster declaration, is, is that on the way? Could Look, we're, we're, I, I can't predict that. I will tell you that all of us are working hard collectively, trust me, to pursue every single last dollar that we can from the federal government, whether it's from the USDA the Small Business Association, whatever the avenues are. I also want to be really clear about Massachusetts. Our farms are special. You know, our farms are not big ag. And so some of the funding that Congress has written 
you know, to, to, to provide relief is not available to our farms. That's important for people to know. So if people think, you know, that there's going to be a whole bunch of money coming from the federal government this way, I'm not holding my breath. None of us are. And I want to be really clear about that. While we will pursue disaster relief, you know, as we've done, because we're not even talking today about things that we visited and talked about last week, the effects and the impact on dams and bridges and culverts and all that. We need, we need federal dollars for that. But when it comes to our farms, the reason we set this up is because we need people to pitch in now. Um, while we pursue uh, all, of, all of those other federal means, and I want to thank our congressional gal delegation as well, um, in, in particular, of course, um, Congressman Jim McGovern, who has made food security uh, such, a, such, a, uh, such a cause of his. Um, I know people are working hard to pursue federal funding, but you know, we can't wait for federal funding. Is Last the question, idea please. that this fund is going to operate in perpetuity to act as a safety net for farms in the state moving forward? Well, I, I think as you heard, this this is a problem that's not going away. I mean, we have blue sky for the first time. Uh, we had fires, you know, I mean, the severe weather. I mean, talk to these guys, talk to the farmers. I mean, this is, there's, this is a way of life now. And we've got to find a way <clears throat> to build sustainable agriculture and farms, resilient uh, farms, uh, a resilient uh, food infrastructure. And this impacted this region, but we've seen other regions impacted uh, with the potential to have other regions impacted with weather as we go forward. So, you know, I think there's a need for this, and I think this unfortunate experience gives us an opportunity as a state to step up and say, whoa, like this is a thing. We've got to find a way to account for this, to address this going forward for the health and well-being of our, of our state. Thank you. Hey, Krista, just let's make sure folks know the websites, unitedwaycm.org slash farm fund. Right, unitedwaycm.org slash farm fund. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.